joined together in the responsive prayer. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And blessed are pure in the heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. you First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 to 22. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated, treated with greater modesty. We we'll listen to a Hindi song, and while Dr. Kalash will lead us in this song, I want you to just go through those words, which are beautiful. Yeah. 
تیری خواہشوں کو مجھ میں بھر دے ہر دائنوں بھی دو فلسفن کموں تھائیں ان میں پیرز اندر بانکیشن چلی لگا سبیٹ وارچ اینڈ بانگ فور آفا He renews our hearts, refreshes our spirits, restores our well-being, and gives new strength to the faint and power to the powerless. Let the church be found working among those who lack resources or rights. May we seek to care for those who cannot care for themselves. We pray for the lowly and the humiliated. Let's pray for the relief organizations, O oh Lord, we do that.
All the way I come to the end of their chitra. Just think of all who are losing their mobility or agility. Those who are losing their memories and all who have lost their grip on reality. Let's pray for those who no longer trust in anyone. And those who doubt the love of God. Especially pray for all who are caring for the other ones in their lives. And thine Second thing I want you to do is to think about anyone in your life who is getting old, whose agility and mobility is slowly going down. Person who is losing his or her memory. As age is creeping on that person, life is becoming slowly difficult. And I want you to pray for that person. Third thing, think about the people who are finding it difficult to trust God anymore because of the kind of life situations they are going through. And if you know anyone in your life like that, give them a God's hand. It's the strong and powerful governments and the embassies which are ruling the world is dying. Think about one of the governments of any country, including India, and one of the embassies. Pray to God, God that they be compassionate. 
in their decision making, in their policies. That your love permeate through their activities. When you pray for the people, you know your prayer touches them and it encourages them to make the right decisions. Their prayers are so needed. Pray silently and Lord will surely bless you and also the people for whom you are praying. the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way, behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the way, on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them that the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that time. This is the word. Praise God for His word. We will prepare ourselves for our faith, a faith which has led so wonderfully. Let's remind ourselves by joining in our faith proclamation. Will all have mercy on us and grant us your salvation? O Lord, save your people and bless their inheritance. Let's join together and believe in one God. Thanksgiving in my heart. And at this time, I request everyone who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries to 
these offerings into your presence. Please accept us. Please uh, receive our offerings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Sister Bill asked some questions in the message and from God's word, Dr. Ajay Kumar will lead us. And let's prepare to ask for today's message. Choir will sing a song, Tere Bin Na Kuch Bi Nahi. If you know that song, you can surely join with the choir. And after the song, Dr. Ajay will lead us in, the, in today's message.
first read from Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 13. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 13. At Bethlehem, the Amalekites came and fought the Israelites. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men, go and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill holding the walking stick of God in my hands. Joshua obeyed Moses and went to fight the Amalekites, while Moses, Aaron, and Hud went to on the top of the hill. As long as Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were winning the fight. But when Moses put his hands down, the Amalekites were winning. Later, when Moses' arms became tired, the men put a large rock under him and he sat on it. Then Aaron and Hur held up Moses' hand, Aaron on one side and Hur on the other. They kept his hand steady until the sun went down. So Joshua defeated the Amalekites in this battle. Then the Lord said to Moses, write about this battle in a book so people will remember. And be sure to tell Joshua because I will completely destroy the Amalekites from the earth. Then Moses built an altar and named it, the Lord is my friend. This is the word of God. Let us pray. I will call you thank you for this time when we have gathered here. When we have read from this uh, Exodus chapter 17, we meditate on this word. We seek your presence and your blessings that you help us understand what this word means to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This is an incident which is quoted in Exodus 17. This is of the Israelites when they came out, um, uh, when they were, uh, they came, they got their freedom from the rule of the Egyptian rule and then they came out. In the first incident where a battle is reported. A battle in Rephidim, it says that in Rephidim, the Amalekites came and fought the Israelites. So, uh, we, what we see here in this incident, what I have seen is, I will share it with you. I see that uh, there was a battle and they, they were facing a challenge, those Israelites, that the community was facing a challenge. And immediately the response was they formed two teams. One team was led by Joshua and the other team was led by Moses. And look at what those teams did. One team went towards the point of action where the opponents were in the valley. And the other team went uphill on the mountain uh, led by Moses and two more. So we know that they won this battle. The result is clear. Uh, I was wondering that uh, after they, they won the battle, they must, while they were celebrating, they must have been discussing who made us win this battle. Obviously, their answer would be that God was there, so that is why we won the battle. But among the two teams, who made us win the battle? Was it the team A, which was led by Joshua, who went in the valley downhill, where operates were? or the team which was praying up on the mountain, who made them win? There could have been arguments, discussions. Some would have said that the team which went in the valley, at the action in the field, made them win. Others would have said the, the people who were praying, because it's written as soon as the Moses' hand was down, they were losing. And uh, when his hands were up in prayer, they were winning. After pondering on it for a while, what I understood from here is that the both teams did their part well. Both teams did their part. That is why they won the battle. It was neither team A who made them win, it was neither team B. It was God who was begging them, but God had enable both teams to do their part. And each one in the team was doing their part. They could have been argument that the members of team A, the one who was led by Joshua, they would have thought that they are taking the better part. It is easier part. To go up hill and pray. And we have been asked to go and fight, then we might die also. 
but none of them argued there. It's not written. But they could have been arguments, but uh, the, we know the result. No one argued and they did what was told to them. Each one of them was important. And also I look at uh, verse 14, where the Lord said to Moses, write about this battle in a book, so people will remember. Very few occasions God has said that, to record it, so that people will remember. Why they should remember? Because this is a, according to me, is a, is a pattern, is a, a model which God wants us to follow. That is why it should be recorded so that one day we are meditating on this. We are listening to this. We are analyzing what is it, what happened there and applying it on ourselves. Maybe that is why God wanted this to happen. All looking at the other places in the Bible, I have seen one thing that God always encourages things. Right from the beginning, when he created man, he said that it is not good for man to be alone. So he created woman. And they created them as a team. Genesis 2 verse 18 says, man should not stay alone. Then when we see that he was choosing leaders from the people he had chosen, the descendants of Abraham, when he chose Moses, Moses was reluctant as a leader. So God told him that you have Aaron with you. I have given you Aaron. And I will teach you and both of you will have the ability to go and lead the nation which I am giving to you. The section which was read from Luke chapter 10, Jesus gave the strategy to disciples. First he chose 12, then he chose 72 others and in some version it is written 70. He chose 70 or 72 and he provided the strategy to them. Go in teams of two. Go in a teams of two and it is written where he was about to go. Where Jesus was about to go, he used to send people in two, not as one. Minimum of two. So go before me in teams of two. In Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 to 20, it is written, Jesus said that when two to three are gathered in my name, I will be present in their midst. So we see various places where God has encouraged teams and teamwork. And um, we know that why they win that battle of ref at Refidim, because each one did their part well and um, they did not argue whether we should be in team A or in team B. And also one more thing I uh, see there is that Moses could have gone alone over the mountain when he said that I will go and pray, I will raise my hand while you are fighting in the valley. He took two people with him, two experienced leaders, two senior leaders approximately of his own age. Moses was minimum 80 years, this was more than 80 years at this moment of time. And we see that, like, what was the importance of them, those two which were taken. Because when Moses' hands uh, were tired, they were, he had support. So the, that support is also important. The team, two will get more return of their labor, it is written in Ecclesiastes. One may have worn out, but two will have a, um, two may help each other. If one falls down, another can uh, make him rise. So we see that in the begin from the beginning of time, the beginning of creation, God has wanted teams to function, function is work. But we also see that the opponent, the enemy, the Satan, he tries to break those teams. The first team he broke was Adam and Eve and their relationship with God by putting a thought. If we look at Genesis chapter 1, 2 and 3, we see that what happened there. 
God had made them in his image and his likeness and given them a place to take care of, a place which was which had everything. Asked them to not to do one thing, to eat the forbidden fruit. That was forbidden to eat that. God asked not to eat the fruit. Serpent approached Eve when she was not with Adam. When they were not together. It is important to note that they were not together at that time. That is the time when he was approached. And serpent told Eve, I have heard that God has asked you not, is it true? Not to eat the fruit. She said that, yes, God has asked not to eat, not even touch it. If we look at the section where God had asked what to do and what not to do, he never asked about not to touch it. He had said not to eat it. Never mentioned that not to see it, not to touch it, not to eat it. But she added something to the word of God. The word of God was not to eat it. She said not to eat, not to touch. That is the beginning of sin. Word of God should be applied as it is. Neither something, anything should be added to it, nor something should be removed from it. So why she did that, immediately she surrendered herself, she trumpeted herself to serpent and the enemy took control. And after that what happened was all the acts of which come from the sinful nature, they were found. The first thing was she uh, thought that it, it would be good to eat this and uh, I may get some more powers, I may get something more which I don't have which he is telling me that I will be She already had all the power that she needed to survive in that moment and with all the blessings. But when she did that, she lost what she already had. So that is uh, what, and this, even today, we see that the beginning of uh, disobedience comes from a thought. If we think about in simple words what is sin is, sin, sin is uh, disobedience to the word of God. That is the sim simplest definition of sin, disobedience to the word of God. And Satan and the ruling spirits of the world want us to disobey to the word of God. To go against this uh, plan of where God has created us to work in teams, to work together bound with love. So, uh, we see that in early church, Paul has mentioned uh, about it in the letter to Corinthians. First one, letter to the uh, church of Corinth. He is mentioned in chapter 1, chapter 3, chapter 1, verse 10, 10 to 12 says, I will read from First Corinthians. Uh, 1 verse 10 to 12. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from close household have informed me that there are quarrels among you, which I mean is this, one of you says I follow Paul, another I follow Apollos, another says I follow Kephas, still another I follow Christ. Chapter 3 verse 4 says, for when one says I follow Paul and another I follow Apollos, are you not mere men, only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned each to his task. The Lord has assigned each to his task and that is important for us to understand the early church, did, we see this happening in church, we see it happening everywhere, in families, uh, in communities, in institutions, and in nations. People are divided over something or the other. This uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5 describes what creates that division. Galatians 
chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 the acts of the sinful nature are obvious sexual immorality immorality impurity and debauchery idolatry witchcraft Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions and envy, drunkenness and so on. I will focus on some of uh, these acts of sinful nature. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy. These are the things which are found everywhere and these are the cause of the divisions. Jealousy, envy, anger, factions. You may see that people are divided on the basis of their opinions. We can uh, have a very good example these days. We are, <coughs> the farmers are agitating uh, and the government has made some laws. So people are having their opinions. Some are supporting the farmers, some are supporting the government. And I see that although the action is happening there, but people are fighting among themselves here. In WhatsApp groups, there are divisions and then they leave the group because they don't disagree with each other. And this is what is mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. What is causing the division? These things, these are planted, these are the seeds which were originally planted by enemy in the first team and now it's continuing in the teams which we have right now. God had given Adam and Eve a work to do, to take care of the garden of Eden which was given to them. And God had given work to the priests also, at, uh, we see later on in Exodus, a uh, work to worship the Lord. Both were the works which are given to God. We also have got works which are given to us by God. What it should, what we need to analyze is, where do where where we are? Where do we fit? In which team are we working? It is important to understand this because uh, unless we work in teams, we may uh, miss the the reward which God has kept for us. Colossians chapter three verse uh, twenty three says, "Work for Lord, not for men." Whatever you work, work for Lord, not for money. We know that our founder also mentioned this. That how she used to work. She said that my work is for a king. It's written here. My work is for a king. And we know from her works that yes, she really did. That is why we are here. That is why 126 years have gone past and so many students, so many alumni who are doing great works in whichever way they are, God has equipped them. And this is continuing, it will continue for many more years till Jesus comes again. This will keep on continuing. So it originated from when she started, when she uh, thought that I will work for the king, the king, the God who has created me. I am reflecting on from this. I am meditating on this for my own uh, life, that what am I doing? I encourage you also can meditate on this, that when we go back, how are we working? Are we working for the Lord as, that is what we say, we are working for the Lord. We are working in mission hospitals because we think that it is a service to God. We have to analyze how. How is that? How we are working for the Lord? We also need to remember that the, whether it is a team A who goes in the field, in the valley, or whether it is team B who stays uphill and is in close connection to God, both of them are important. That is what, that is why God wanted that this section should be written down. If we are working for the Lord, are we working in a way God has wanted us, God wants us to work? 
like in teams. If yes, then which team are we in? Identify those teams in the families. Are we united with our relatives, our friends? Or is there a division in them? Are we united in the offices in which we work? Or is there a division? We have to identify the division and get it removed. The th third thing which we should work on is I'm um, telling this to medical students also because in the foundation course the new first year will join we taught them how to work in teams. There uh, we are focusing on that while you are working in the team what is the most important thing is the task, the goal of that team, of that group. If the group wins, the team wins, the individual wins. If one person wins, the team loses. So we need to look at these three things. Are we working for the Lord? Are we working in teams? And are, who are we focused on? Are we focused on the goal or self? Are we working in the team for ourselves or for the goal of that team? In the end, we need to stay united we need to ask God to help us stay united because that is what God wants us to be. And that is, and when we are all together, together, all of us when together are stronger than each one of us. Each individual will be strong, but when we are together in totality, we are the strongest. So we are a great community, 126 years. 953 onwards, MBBS course, there's so many in 912, and they are our strength. They are our strength when they are together. They are individually doing great things, but when they come together and connect with the, what God has, what wants from this institution, then we are going to achieve, and I believe that this year is going to be a year of blessing, when we are realizing early in this year that how we have to work. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time which when we are gathered here. We thank you for this reminder how you want us to work. You want us to work in team. Father, I bind all the spirits of division that are working among us in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you help us all be bound together with love. We ask in Jesus' name. Stay united so that we can be a blessing. Let's all stand and let us unite ourselves with each other and with Christ by preparing ourselves for communion. Let's sing together, Jesus, keep me in the other place.
entirely known and entirely filled with God's presence. All who are made in God's own image, all who breathe the breath of God's spirit. Jesus calls to the table to the meal that nourishes our bodies and binds our dry bones into one body, living in Christ. Jesus calls us here and now. Is it time for the repentance and check ourselves? Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are tired, you are worn out from carrying heavy burdens. Put down the heavy load that you are carrying, and you will find rest for your souls. For a moment, by yourself. Let's think about the sins we have committed knowingly and unknowingly during this last whole week. Confession to your sin is open yourself for God's purification. So give yourself in God's hand. Thank you, God. But here I return. You will find me. Right. We're joined together. Father God, we confess that we don't always understand our emotions. We fear the emotions.
This is for you, but it may change you from one who is anxiously concerned about their own condition into one who knows that Christ's body is the earth and all who walk upon it are one in him. So come to be made whole and to participate in the work of making us one with him and with each other. The Holy Body and Blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken and shed of the Calvary, for the forgiveness of your sins, for peace in your mind and rest in your soul. So with this faith that Christ died for you and me, come and be part of it. Please be seated. And while the choir will lead us in these songs, I request all those who come prepared to come forward, kneel down, and be part of the community.
Let us thank God for the bigness and part of his body and blood that is joined together. Father God, we thank you for feeding the Lord. We have received nourishment, hope, and consolation. May you glory in us, so that we may become the seeds of our love and the Lord among us. So the Holy Spirit, guide us in the way and the way. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Before closing, one thing I'm just doing an announcement is. Tomorrow is February 8th, that is 8th to 14th, the Sunday. It's EMI week. It's a healing ministry week. Christian Medical Association of India. And this unit in our institution is, is holding the different programs for this whole week. And morning devotions of the hospital chapel will be as for the CMA week devotions this whole week, starting from tomorrow at, eight, at 7.30. And uh, different sections of, heads of the different sections of the, of the CMA unit here will lead in those devotions in the morning. So please do join. On 14th, the Sunday, it will be the CMA Sunday along with the Holy Communion. So please do remember that and please do join. Anyone who is joining the first time in our campus service, can stand, you can introduce yourself. No one is here. Today we are so thankful for our alumni association committee and, and all our musicians for leading and guiding us for today's worship. Alumni association committee is a committee of 10 people. Dr. Kavita, Dr. Rajay, Dr. Santosh, Dr. Neelu, Dr. Ravinder, Dr. Kalash, Dr. Paul, Dr. Sumit, Dr. Madhulika, and Dr. Clarence. And along with them, there is a staff, fully, uh, hospital staff, uh, office staff, Ambika. Uh, together, they have made all the arrangements for today's worship and let the alumni activities will go on smoothly in coming here. They have also arranged the refreshments for each and every one of us, not now, surely after the worship. So please do join in it. It's arranged behind the chapel in the lawns, so please do join in that and let it be a time of fellowship. That's all for today. We'll all stand and we'll sing together. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. That is the message we have done today. That's right.
I want you to think about at least one of our other nights who's there somewhere outside holding the beacon of God's call. We saw the king. Let us think about one of the nights Second thing I want you to do is to pray for our alumni association committee. The different activities. You the members in that sense. Okay, to go out for the help. And the last one. A new month has gone in your life. Please be seated. 